who I've been working with now for at least two and a half years. He asked me to draw a sketch of a creature that he saw many years earlier and his encounter was very, very intense and left him with life-changing memories that he's had to deal with for over 40 years. He lives in British Columbia and at the time he was staying in a, a little log cabin uh, in the woods of central British Columbia called uh, the Caribou. He is 67 years old now. He told me that he wants to tell his story because he believes it's important for people to know the truth. And the only way to get there is to step forward and share it with, the, with others so that we can all compare notes and join the dots. And he believes the Sasquatch is smarter than we know. And we have a lot to learn about a lot of things. So thank you, Mark, for being here today and welcome to Sketching Encounters. Well, thank, yeah, thank you for having me and uh, thank you for all of your help with everything that you've been doing. Um, You're welcome. I'm very impressed with your podcast and it's a, it's a pleasure to be on it. Well, thank you so much for being here. You and I have done a whole lot of work. I mean, your encounter was, <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing. It, it was. Uh, the funny thing is, I had no idea that it was um, so unusual. I mean, obviously, it was very, very strange and yeah. everything. But um, in hindsight and, and listening to what other people have had to experience it it really does kind of stand out they uh yeah they were either picking on me or they had picked me to to uh to show some stuff anyway and, and that's how it turned out so I'm, i'd be happy to talk about how it happened and yes, where it happened and, yes and how it all kind of started like the things that you started noticing yeah. because i don't i don't think sasquatch was was on your radar was it i mean oh not at all yeah. I had never even heard the word Sasquatch at, at that point. Never saw that. I mean, this was in the uh, you know early to mid 70s. And I had never heard the word. Uh, I had never seen the film, uh, the, the Gimlin film. Uh, no, it wasn't on the radar at all. It was a total surprise. So uh, these things all came slowly. But I was about 20 years old and I had moved up into this little cabin uh to spend some time you know a year or two is what i was thinking and uh i was kind of running away from the city i, I was born and raised in vancouver and i wanted to get out into the country and live in the wilderness and experience that and i had the opportunity to uh work on this this cabin it was one of our it was in our family it was kind of a a joint thing the property was in my name the my mother helped uh with some of the money to build the cabin. My dad had found the property. So it was a family uh, thing. And I was ha happy to get up there. Um, so I just loved it. I got up yeah. there, I had all my I had all my food and all my, uh, everything I thought that I needed to, to live up there, fishing stuff. Um, I had an old 3030, which I, I never used, but I figured I was pretty well prepared. <laughs> um, so I get up to the, to the cabin and I uh, just loved it. Um, everything was going well. It was so peaceful and so quiet. Uh, I guess the first thing that was unusual that started to happen was um, things like wood knocks. That was one of the very first was uh, usually in the evening, I would early evening, I would hear uh, wood knocking. And I thought it was somebody chopping on a yeah. tree, chopping firewood up on the hill which was weird because there was no road up there and nobody would be up there using an ax to chop firewood. So <laughs> that wasn't right. Uh, but it, it would happen one night and then another night and then another one. And, and they would get closer. Like I thought, well, somebody's cutting wood and he keeps getting closer. Pretty soon I'm going to see him because it sounded like he was next door chopping wood. But I realized that it just, that isn't what was happening. So I, I wrote it off. A lot of the things that were happening, I didn't know what they were. So I had a lot to learn about the country and the wilderness. And I just, I just uh, let it go over my head, you know, and, and didn't even really uh, think too much about it. Um, yeah. Sticks snapping was another one, a big one. And that continued the whole summer. Um, 
sometimes right beside me, a very loud stick snap would happen, and it, it just sounded like a, a moose would step on a branch and snap it right beside me sometimes. And I would look, and I never saw the moose or deer or anything. I just wow. didn't know what that was. Wow. These sticks, yeah. Yeah, it happened so often uh, in the daytime, too, not just at night, but yeah. at daytime. And rocks. Um, well, the, the, the one morning I was eating my breakfast, and this big, I thought, well, oh, there must be a giant fish out there jumping in the water. <laughs> and I would see fish jumping, and they didn't sound like that at all. It was, it was a, a big rock about the size of a cantaloupe landing in the water and going kerplunk. Right. And that would happen. Oh man. I would go out there for breakfast every few days. Uh, a rock would fly and la and I never saw the rock. It was always when I was eating and it would go over and just bloosh. And um, sometimes I would run. I thought, okay, somebody's doing this. So I would run down to the water and I'm looking for somebody. <laughs> Wow. And nobody's there. There was there was uh it was very remote. Yeah. No no neighbors close by, you know, there's some summer cabins in the area, but uh at that time there was just nobody up there except me. Wow. Yeah. Um yeah, no, these things they just they kept happening and I just kind of shaking my head and I'm thinking, oh well, that's <laughs> just the way it is, you know. The, <laughs> <laughs> the sticks just snap every once in a while and and um i didn't know what to make out of the rock i thought fish jumping or birds landing you know like a big bird landing in the water and yeah of course it wasn't that yeah uh, and then and then some of the stuff was a little more obvious uh i would come in and i should say what, what i was doing was working on the cabin i, I was there to clear the land and trim the trees and build an outhouse and, uh, you know, uh, build, build the place up a bit. So yeah. I was working on it, you know, raking and cutting and things yeah. like that. And uh, one time I, I raked all the rocks where I was parking my truck and I raked it nice and smooth because they were quite lumpy. And um, I was kind of happy with that. And the one day, almost the next day, I got in my truck and I went to go and instead of the smooth road the truck went boom 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 again and i was bumping over these big rocks ah, what the heck <laughs> so i get out and i look and they had put rocks the rocks back underneath my truck where i would drive over them um and i thought somebody was playing a joke on me you know they they thought oh yeah if you think you can rake it smooth we'll put the rocks back and that would that would be the joke well, wow it, it was Oh yeah, they it was kind of funny, and sometimes I do think they have a sense of well, I know they they do have a sense of humor, yeah, uh, very much like a person, yeah. Uh, well, th th then they are really yeah. people, right? Um, and then uh, one day after I'd been there for a little over a week, I think this is what really got the interaction started. And it was almost by accident, but I caught a bunch of fish. I did really good. I caught like four good sized fish and I brought them back and I cut all their heads off and the tails and all the guts. And I was going to have my fish fry. And uh, I went to throw the guts and heads on the, in the water, you know, let the birds come and get them. Usually did that. Only this time when I went to do that, I got this little feeling like, no, stop, don't, you know, and I thought, I thought about it for a second and, and the idea came to me, oh, don't do that. You'll bring in the bears or something like that. And I thought about it and I, I don't know, it seemed kind of funny, but I thought, okay, well, maybe a better idea would be I'll just dig a hole and put all the guts and the heads in the hole and then okay. bury it and then uh, get rid of them that way. Uh -huh. It was a really weird idea, actually, but I did that, and uh, I thought that was okay. The fish were great, rainbow trout. Yeah. Um, but for the next few days, I would walk by where I had buried the the heads, thinking, you know, that was really a dumb idea because <laughs> they're, they're just going to rot in the ground, and a bear's going to come along. And about the third day later, 
sure enough, I walked by and they were, they were dug up and uh, the soil was down a lot lower again like that. And you could see that it had been like padded down or something. I thought, well, what happened? I thought something must have got in there. I went and I dug it up and all the heads and tails were gone. But the dirt had been put back in back, the hole right. and it was like padded. Yeah. And it was padded down again. <laughs> I thought that is really weird. I've seen dogs bury their bone and they will put soil on it and then pat it down with their nose. And it, it kind of looked like that. And I thought, oh, I guess bears do that too. Yeah. And, and the poor bears, you know, I never saw a bear up there not even in the in that country i no 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 bear uh droppings no bear footprints nothing i never saw a bear up there but it was always bear 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 look out for the bear you know <laughs> yeah. okay you know that well <laughs> wow. that, i mean i guess it's something you're going to look out for yeah um so when i when i uh uh fried up the fish i took the frying pan uh, it was an old cast iron thing, and it was kind of hard to wash. So I just took it and put it in the lake to soak. I'm kind of huh? lazy, you know. I thought, I'll <laughs> soak it. And, and uh, you know, I went out to work uh, that day or the next day, and I went to use the frying pan, and the frying pan was gone. It wasn't in the water. And oh, I thought, my. Who the heck, yeah, who, who the heck would come and take the frying pan? <laughs> I thought. I didn't know what happened to it. I was kind of mad. I thought somebody stole my frying pan. Yeah. And uh, I eventually found it about a week later, sort of tossed off into the bush a little bit, you know, not too far. And you could tell that it had been um, uh, licked or, or scrubbed out. Clean. It looked like it was scrubbed out, yeah. scrubbed clean. Wow. And, and, uh, and I thought, well, somebody didn't like me putting the frying pan in the water. And they took it out and threw it in the bush. That's what yeah. I thought. <laughs> okay, so yeah, well that that happened. I mean, and then you know, a few days after that, that 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 idea of the frying pan getting licked out or whatever, that happened a couple of times. You know, when I when I used it, uh, one time I did bacon, and oh my gosh, that thing was spotless. <laughs> like the next day, it was just spotless. And I thought, wow, something, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm looking for bare footprints, of course, and there isn't any, but something came and licked out the frying pan. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I remember the uh, the, the, the top of the uh, fireplace, it was steel and it had steel legs on it. And I would come home because I was working out a little bit as well. I would come home and the uh, fireplace had been, kind of pulled out of the ground which took a lot like they were hammered into the ground but it was wow. kind of pulled up out of the ground I thought oh somebody doesn't like my frying pan somebody doesn't like my stove either that's crazy wow. and, and, and you know other things that the chairs always the metal ones too the I'd come home and the, I would have the chairs set up in the front yard and the, the metal chairs would be pushed over not never the wooden ones, just always the metal chairs. I'd come home and I almost knew I, you could just feel it. You know, all the chairs are going to be all on the ground again. You know, wow. Uh, I wonder why. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, you can guess. And I got lots of guesses. I mean, quick guesses. They like the butter fat, they like the licking, and they were trying to remind me to, uh, you know, do some more. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Well, don't, I, I don't, might forget, be that don't forget, we like licking your. Yeah. I might be that maybe. way about bacon too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That one really seemed to get them, get yeah. them going. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, I've heard about gifting and, and, and such. Some people give them food, and um, I guess that kind of happened accidentally in my case i had no idea right. i was so uh unaware of what was going on uh, it wasn't until i actually saw them uh in full you know in front of me before i realized and even then i you know i mean but until i saw them i didn't know what was going on yeah um, so one day i went for a walk and this was pretty cool i thought i i was um 
looking at the the ground and trying to read the uh you know the footprints and what's going on and i came across a a, a bunch of feathers and a, a kill where something like a coyote or whatever had killed a grouse mm -hmm. and ripped it all up and feathers everywhere and and ate it and there was you know feet and a, and a wing and a couple of pieces left over and it was all scattered around and i thought oh cool a coyote or fox or something caught a a grouse I thought that was interesting it's like the next day or, or two i went for the a very similar walk and i came across the grouse feathers again but they weren't scattered they were in a little pile it was like a pile of grouse feathers and i thought wow a coyote eats the grouse and he makes a big mess. Something else eats the grouse and he piles up the feathers. And I thought, okay, I don't know what is that, but it's different. Yeah. But I noticed. It's, yeah. I noticed. So after I noticed the feathers, like these, the, the Sasquatch, they, they know what you're doing all the time. They just seem to be watch, watching as, as you know. I know you know. Yeah. <laughs> they, I do. They, they, they just don't, yeah. They don't miss a trick, and they and they got their, they like the feathers and and stuff. So, I came home one time or from my walk, and there's a little ball of feathers, uh, on the ground in front of the door of the cabin, and it kind of looked like a, a, you know, it had been in your pocket. It was a few feathers all kind of stuck together in a little ball. And I thought, oh, right in front of the door. So I picked it up and I looked at it and it was like three different feathers in there. There was a grouse feather and some kind of a duck feather, like a down. Wow. And one was a beautiful, yeah. And one was a beautiful uh, uh, blue, a uh, blue jay feather. And I thought, wow, that's cool. But how do you get three different birds? Their feathers all crumpled together in a little knot like that and i thought that 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 was odd so i dropped but i really looked at that blue jay feather because well they're beautiful to look at they beautiful blue color and all that and i'm looking yeah. at it and like really looking at it you know um and i put it back down and you know went on my way thinking again what a, what a coincidence again everything was a coincidence <laughs> uh, so a, a couple days later i came back and I went to go in my back door. This is on the other side of the cabin. I went to go into my back door and right beside the door stuck in a crack in the wood was a blue jay feather stuck in the wood and wow. poking out. It was like a, a business card. Somebody had left a business card, the blue jay feather stuck there. That's so amazing. there was the three interesting ones out front in one day, which I looked at and then there's the one single blue jay feather right near the door. So I, I I think that they have a thing for for blue jay feathers. And I'll never forget the story you told me about your blue jays. Yes. Which was even worse than mine. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. you want to share that right now or not. Yeah, it was, it was, it, I do, yeah. I don't know what the connection is with them and blue jays, but I, I definitely had a very similar experience except they brought me a whole bird and put it on that the porch <laughs> yeah, like the yeah. whole bird yeah, yeah they... <laughs> oh i laughed when i heard that i i laughed so much because um they left me feathers too and it it it, it struck a chord <laughs> yes yes yeah so what were you so, thinking uh, what were you thinking at that point mark so you you're they're leaving these little the wind you were thinking it was the wind. Okay. So you still hadn't made the connection that there was. I oh, mean, no. It's, oh, yeah. no. Well, no. I I knew it was beyond coincidence, but I had no other. Um, I had nothing else that I could think about. I, right, I just right. thought the wind incredibly blew this feather into a crack. And I never saw a blue jay or a blue jay feather, but it was in the crack and there it was. And. You know, I brought it inside and you no, know, I didn't know what to think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know what it is. It's um, 
I think I had my head in the sand a little bit. I, I was so uh, enjoying the, the, the work and the life and the wilderness that I, I, I really wasn't sure. Uh, I wasn't ready to think spooky stuff, <laughs> you know. Um, but there, but it continued. The the gifting things happened quite often on the deck. This is over the, the whole summer, a few months. You yeah. know? But on the deck, uh, there would be a frog. The, one time there was a frog, and it creeped me out because the frog wasn't dead, but he was squished in the middle. And he had his tongue sticking out. He's on his back. And he's like half alive. Wow. And I had to think, well, what could possibly put a frog there? Right. I mean, if it was a bird or an animal, they would eat it, right? They wouldn't put it on my deck. But mm. this one was on the deck. <laughs> yeah, it was It was a lot to think about. But um on my truck, I had a turtle shell one time. It was a, a turtle shell. I never saw a turtle. Um, and and then some other things that were pretty nice. Just excuse me for one minute. Mm -hmm. So was the turtle shell upright or was it uh, on its back? And where did they leave the turtle shell on your truck? Inside the truck. Inside the truck. And, and the shell was uh, emptied out like it was like an old one and it was all dry, uh, you know, like it had been laying in the sun for a year or two. Um, it was in your seat, like they put it on your seat? On my seat. Yeah, I had a bench seat and it was right in the middle of the bench seat sitting <laughs> inside the truck. And what did you think inside then? The yeah, did you think someone was still pranking you or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was the same guy that put the rocks underneath my tires, right? <laughs> that uh, some neighbor uh, that I didn't see, or you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I figured I was being pranked. Yeah. Sure. Wow. I had nothing, you know. What else? Yeah. The the dragonflies. That was really nice. That was something else too, and it it goes to the. Um, them knowing and noticing uh, what you're looking at. One day I picked up a, a dragonfly. It was a great big blue one. It was quite beautiful and it was all dried. You know, they, they die and they, they dry right out. And I picked it up and it was pretty cool. It had legs missing and a couple of wings missing. And I don't know, maybe the head, it was, it was beat up, but it was cool. And I'm looking at it on that very same walk. I was out on a walk the very same walk when I got back to the cabin there was a dragonfly body in front right where those feathers were in front of the door in front of the cabin again and it was all dried out I thought what are the odds this dragonfly died and dried and ended up in front of my door that's just amazing um, wow so I picked that, it up I thought that was really cool it is. well and it, yeah well and it, and it was but, you know, it wasn't a few days later after that, three or four days again go by, and I had gone out. And when I came home, I kid you not, when I came home, I never locked the doors there or anything. But uh, inside the cabin, uh, right on the windowsill, like in on the windowsill inside the cabin was the most beautiful dried dragonfly sitting there. And it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. There was no legs, miss, nothing missing on it. It was in perfect condition. Uh, and it was wow. amazing. It was really big and just perfect to look at. And I thought, oh, my goodness, a dragonfly must have flown into the cabin. I didn't see him. And then he died. And then he dried out right in front of the window. Look at that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that happened. Wow. Yeah. So there was a lot of uh, that gifting kind of stuff going on. And of course, you know, even that word gifting, this is all in hindsight, I realized, you know, the, the right. things that were going back and forth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think any of it was a coincidence, of course. No, sir. Um, but, but things ramped up a little bit, you know, they got more, maybe they got more used to me, uh, but they were kind of getting pushy too. Like, the one side of the cabin that was closer to the trees, 
that's where they, uh, it, it was like they didn't want me on that side of the cabin. And, and you could almost feel it. Uh, I would take a step to go that way and I would feel, oh, no, go back, step back. Don't, really? you know, and I would, yeah, you could kind of feel it. it it's just kind of a, a feeling, you know, and I just sort of stay away from that side of the cabin. And I just thought, I don't know what that feeling is. I didn't make anything of it. I just thought, you know, well, the other side is nicer to walk on. And it was funny because that side of the cabin was the short side that you would usually use, but it was closer to the trees. And I think they wanted a little more privacy and they didn't want me on that side of the cabin. I kind of think that's what it was, but you know, yeah. Um, but, uh, one time I went to, my mom came to visit and she says, what are you doing with all that junk underneath the cabin? I said, what is junk under, does you, you can't be throwing all your garbage and stuff under the cabin. She says, that's not good. And I thought there was nothing there, but I went and looked and sure enough, it was stuffed in the back underneath the cabin. It's only a couple of feet off the ground. There was, um, boxes and well, pails and a piece of insulation and different junk that had been pushed underneath the cabin and uh, my mom's giving me heck about it so I thought okay I got to go and get that get that junk cleaned out and I went under there and I started to try to pull some of that stuff out I grabbed a couple pieces and I thought well this is crazy because it wasn't my junk and I don't know where it came from it wasn't the neighbor's junk it was just odd weird stuff you know old wood that yeah. who knows where it came from and who wow. knows why it got put underneath the cabin there's no reason for it it wasn't part of the construction or anything you know it was just miscellaneous bits and pieces isn't so that went, interesting uh, that's very I interesting went, yeah sorry oh it gets way more <laughs> interesting than i thought I go to pull this stuff out and uh, I go, the further I go underneath the cabin, when I get up towards the, the shallow end, because it, it was tapering down and it was get, when I, I got past the garbage and here's this big area, 10 feet by the width of the cabin. Um, and it's absolutely, it looks like it's been raked to perfection. It's smooth. Oh, and it my. looked like it was brushed. It was absolutely beautiful, fresh, smooth, not a pebble or a, it was just spotless, uh, flat and everything. And I looked at that and I thought, well, how odd. we got all this garbage over here. And yet here's this open, flat, clean spot over here. And yeah. I thought, that's crazy, you know? So I went to stick my hand in it because it was so flat i wanted to see if it was as soft as it looked it looked like really soft soil you know i went yeah. to stick my hand in it and it i just felt right away no you know i just felt it like no don't touch that and i just oh shoot <laughs> and, and it was and i went i thought well that's dumb of course i'm gonna touch it why would and i went to touch it again and i just felt that again and it just Wow. pushed me out of there. I just got the biggest feeling of get the hell out of here. Don't touch it. Back off. Get out. You know, and, and it, it felt like um, claustrophobia, intense claustrophobia. And I just backed out of there in a hurry. I mean, it was just I thought, my God, I never had claustrophobia before. But man, I had the worst attack. Wow. Spontaneous. Wow. Attack of claustrophobia. <laughs> so that's what I felt. So I backed the hell out of there. And this this part's kind of funny because I couldn't go back in. I felt so freaked. I I I tried later to finish my work there. I couldn't go back in. So I decided to do something else, and that was to hide all the garbage, the garbage that was still under there because I couldn't bring myself to go back underneath there again. Uh, and that, that's what I ended up doing. I, I uh, filled in around the cabin after all of that. But I was aware that that was a strange, uh, that was a lot of work to do that. And I knew it was kind of odd to be doing that, but that's what I did. And I, I was aware too that 
emotions and things seem to be really uh, uh, up and down there. Like uh, sometimes you would become, uh, one time it rained, it started to rain and it rained really hard. And I was thinking, oh, this is cool. I'm glad to be inside and glad to have a roof. And I started playing my guitar and enjoying the rain. And, you know, it was kind of fun, but it got more intense. The intensity of everything just ramped right up. You know, it, it just got, the rain kept coming down harder and harder and faster and faster, like scary, like I've never seen before. And I'm, I'm playing my guitar like crazy. Like I'm not even that good, but I was just banging away on it. And, I'm singing and it was just so crazy. I felt giddy with uh, joy and, and enthusiasm and everything. And I ended up literally running around the cabin. I had so much energy. I ran around that cabin like two or three times in the rain, like an idiot, just crazy um, for no good reason. Just felt like it, you know, but that, yeah. that happened. But it kind of reminded me of the, the other feelings, the, 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 uh, the dread of going under the cabin or, or the being pushed away from uh, going down the side of the cabin or something like that. It was, uh, you know, they, they, uh, yeah, there, there's a, a telepathy that they can uh, let you feel their, their moods. <laughs> anyway, they had me going that, 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 that was for sure. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Other things that happened was the, uh, the birds uh, and other animals. I had a squirrel that came and he was there for a while and he would come and chatter uh, right close to my door and I would go out and look at him and, you know, leave him a little bit of food or something. And I could always hear him. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool because I could hear him coming down the tree, uh, his little nails on the bark. And I thought, okay, it's nice to have a place where it's so quiet. You can hear the, the wildlife like that. So, uh -huh. I would listen for him, and after a while, I would hear the, the little fingernails on the bark, but there was no squirrel. And I would run over there to look for the squirrel, and I thought, well, if there's no squirrel, what's making the, the, the noise, the sound of the fingernails on the bark? Yeah. And that happened a few times. I would run around looking for the squirrel, no squirrel, but I could hear him. And the same thing happened with this grouse. He used to thump on the, on the stump. And uh, I thought that was pretty neat. He'd get up there in the evening and thump away, you know, thump, 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 thump with his wings. And um, I'd go look at him. You know, he's right there, close. I'd go out to look at him, and I'm hearing the thumping, but I don't see the grouse. Yeah. But I hear him, but I don't see him. Yeah. I thought, okay, he's hiding, but, I mean, why isn't he standing on his stump, you know? And then, and then uh, the big one, really big one, was the loon, the, the call of the loon. One, you know, there was a loon that lived on the other side of the lake. And when I heard that loon, I thought, what a beautiful sound, you know, so yes. uh, loud and clear and beautiful. So I used to go and listen, and I really loved the sound of that loon. And I could see him there on the other side, and I thought that was great, you know, the wilderness, that, that was the, the thing. But sometimes um, I had to wonder about that because I would, I could, I knew where he was, right across from me, but I would hear the sound of him and didn't see him. Mm -hmm. and later on in the season, like way later on, near oh, winter was coming, I could still hear the sound of the loon. And when I heard it, I loved it, the sound. I would go out and look. I'd be inside the cabin and I would hear the loon. I would go outside to look to see him. And uh, <clears throat> of course, never saw him, but I could hear him. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to a lady about the birds and she was a bird watcher and we were, she was telling me about the loons and I said, yeah, I, I still hear them calling in that. And she says, yeah, she says, so I've heard them as well. And she says, that's very unusual because they, they migrate way earlier than now. She says, I, I, I've heard them, but then I, I haven't seen them, but I know what you mean. And I've heard them. And I thought, well, that's, I was starting to, to wise up that some of these things were just uh, out there a little yeah. bit, you know. Yeah. Um, but at least you got some validation that you weren't the only one hearing the loons. And, of course, all the little things, the, the rocks and the, 
the stick snapping and uh, that was still going on. The sticks picked up. The wood knocking pretty much stopped, but the sticks um, and I almost it sounds crazy, but I almost uh, liked it because <laughs> it made me, it was almost like a good morning. Sometimes I would get up and I'd go outside first thing, as soon as I step out of the cabin, snap. And I thought, yep, yeah, there's that snap again. Yeah. You know, or, or I would come home in my truck. I'd come home and, and start walking down the driveway and I would get a snap. And I thought, yep, yeah, that's this property. The sticks really snap around here. And I kind of. <laughs> You know, something that I will start to look forward to. I I even remember one time coming home and not hearing anything for a couple of days. And I'm thinking, where's the snap? You know, what happened? Where's the snap? Yeah. Well, of course, after two or three days, that snap started again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now this one, this next thing that happened was towards the end of the summer, and this one was uh, beyond normal. It, uh, I'm going up the driveway, and I got hit in the shoulder uh, with a little thing. A little, I could feel something hit me, and I thought it might be a grasshopper that had jumped up and mm -hmm. bounced off my shoulder. Mm -hmm. so I walked a few more steps, and I got hit by another one right in the same place on my shoulder. I thought, wow, same place. <laughs> I'm walking along, and I, you know, I'm thinking, this is kind of funny. And I and I, I got hit on the shoulder again, and it, this time I, it uh, kind of bounced off my shoulder. And I ran forward. I saw it. I went forward and I picked it up, and it was a little tiny pine cone, a little bud uh, off of yeah. a tree. Yeah. And it was still green and wet. Then I thought that's too much. I'm looking for. I'm not underneath any trees. It wasn't like a squirrel dropped it or anything like that. So I, my eyes are getting pretty big, I guess. <laughs> I'm walking up the driveway. One more, another one. This is like the fourth time. Wow. I get hit by this little pine cone. I just turned around and ran down the driveway because I was sure there had to be a kid with a slingshot. I thought there's no other way. Because they were hitting me with velocity. I could actually hear the little click, the little tick. Of course, in hindsight, I'm, I'm thinking that's the sound of a fingernail. They were flicking them. Flicking them. Like that. Um, <laughs> flicking them. Wow. They were flicking. They were hitting really fast. They weren't thrown. They were flicked. I could hear the little click. Wow. Click, like that. Yeah. From point blank. And I would turn around and I saw nothing. Not just, And this is in the daytime, too. Wow. Three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Nobody there. As usual, nobody there. You know, no moose stepping on sticks, nobody chopping wood, none of that. <laughs> you know, I never saw. So all that stuff happened. Um, okay. And then th that, that one was odd. Now, I, I had made a friend up there, a young fella, and he would come by occasionally and visit. And he he was fun. It was nice to have a little company. Sure. And we're both young. He he was maybe nineteen, uh, maybe twenty, and he came by one time unexpected with a couple of girls about the same age, and and they had brought beer, and they had brought food, and two young girls, single <laughs> girls, and with food. And he, it was, oh, it was, oh, it was terrific. Thank you very much. You know. So we popped a beer, and we're all sitting out there, and out on the <clears throat> just off the side of the deck <clears throat> and and uh hadn't even finished the first beer but halfway to the beer never tried a sandwich i don't even know what kind they were uh there's something happened and i didn't really hear it but uh the the girl uh jumped up and said what's that and i said Nothing, but I guess she had heard like a, a footstep in the in the bushes or in the beside her, and she heard something stomping in the, and I didn't really hear it. So now we're all kind of, what, what are you talking about? We heard it again, and it, it was a little more. It was a little bit. It was foot stomping, just a little thump thump thumpity, sounding in the bushes, and I thought, well, 
I was kind of used to that, you know, like <laughs> the odd thing like that. And, 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 and I said, it's nothing, you know. And she's, you know, both the girls are just looking at each other like, where, you know, where, where the heck are we? This, and um, next thing you know, the stick snapping. Right beside her, I heard it as loud as it just that great big snap right beside this girl. And then another one, snap. Well, she just freaked. She jumped and said, there's something really weird going on around here. And I thought, no, no. That, and I remember saying the stupidest thing. I said, well, that happens. That happens. You know, you know, it's just like how they do. Just, they don't snap at my house. And I thought about that for a minute, too. I, what does that mean? Um, I thought sticks must just snap everywhere, you know. Yeah. They work or something. I don't know. But they left. They were so scared. The girls jumped up, grabbed the beer, took the food <laughs> up the driveway, and they were gone. They never came back. Never seen them again. Wow. I was so disappointed. I was and and angry too, you know. Like I thought, boy, just talk about a wreck my day. Yeah. So I went out where we were standing, and I'm talking to myself, and and, and I'm saying stuff like, well, "What did that have to happen for? What was that all about? Why did you have to do that?" And I'm thinking, well, that's a dumb thing to think or to say. I don't know if I said it out loud or not, but that's what I'm thinking. You know, what yeah. do that for? Yeah. Something. Well, foot stomping and stick snapping chased the girls away, and that much was clear, and they were yeah. gone. Um, so that happened. Um, anyway, it was very short after that. All these things happened. That's the lead up. Okay, then the big night, the night of the visit happened yeah. uh and th this just ended everything uh including my stay at the cabin <laughs> right um yeah okay so i had moved my uh cot in front of the big picture window in in front of the cabin in the front and it was really nice up there uh the moonlight was off the water the water was only a few feet uh a few yards from the from the lake and uh, at night there with a, with a good moon, mm -hmm. you had the moonlight, but also the bounce light off the lake. It was quite pretty in there and there's lots of light in there. And that became important later when they, when they showed up because so they, all right. So two Sasquatch decided to come and see me, pay a visit. I'm, I'm, I'm asleep or going to sleep, laying in the bed beside the window. And I could hear uh, gravel crunching outside, uh, footsteps, <clears throat> but very, very slow. Just a single little crunch, and then nothing, and then I, you know, and then another little crunch, nothing, and a little tiny stick snap, just a little one, and then nothing. And I kind of thought, well, if something's out there, it'll walk away. I don't care. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm not going to get up. <clears throat> and just as I'm thinking that, well, I'm not going to get up. Then I hear the voices, and there's two. One is really deep, <clears throat> and it said like a, well, it wasn't English. He, some kind of a greeting, like "Ula, ula da," or "Aloda," or "Ola," or something like that. I don't know what. It, yeah. Some kind of a loud thing, and then he got answered by another voice, which was really different. It it made uh, buzzing and popping noises and. Anyway, they were going back and forth like language, a few sentences back and forth. And I thought, I jumped up, of course. I thought, son of a bitch, I got company. You know, I got somebody <laughs> to see me. And I thought, why would they come to the front of the cabin uh, by the lake? The, uh, if you come down the driveway, you're going to come to the back of the cabin. So them right. coming in the front was weird. And that's where all the light was. So I get up and I look. Of course, I don't see anything at all, except I heard them very clearly. So now I'm totally uh, freaked out. I'm listening, and uh, I see nothing, so I put my head back down, 
And I'm thinking, okay, that I must be really tired. That must have been a dream, of course. I, I didn't really hear what I heard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hear boards creaking. And the next thing, really loud creaking, like not just a little creak, you know, but a, you know, right to the breaking point. These boards were bending, creaking and bending. I thought, not fast, super slow, just a one here, wait, another one. You know, like they're sneaky, sneaking up. And I could hear this creaking uh, boards happening. And I thought, oh, my God, it's on the deck. They're on the deck, you know. Yeah. So, But something, uh, something obviously with a whole lot of weight. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought it was a bear. You know, yeah. Thought, okay, what? <clears throat> it's got to be a bear, you know. So I, thought, I look out and, of course, I don't see anything. And I really look, and I don't see anything. But something's wrong. I keep hearing the, the creaking. So I look again, and I realize there's a big shadow in the corner. And it's uh, kind of tr- translucent, but it looks just like a great big shadow. It's about five feet tall, about three feet wide, kind of oval. And it's just sitting there. But there's something there. Yeah. I thought, okay. I could hear it and I could see the shadow. What the hell? You know, so I'm looking at it again and I'm thinking, is that is that a bear? Is there is that a bear that came up on the deck? As soon as I got that thought in my head, I got I got <clears throat> like when you talk to yourself you verbalize. Mm-hmm. I got a verbalization bear yes bear <clears throat> so i don't see a bear all i see is a shadow as soon as i think bear i start to see the hair and i can see through the shadow it, it looks like there's little dots floating around and i can see through it especially in the center and i can see hair beautiful hair like long shiny hair in the middle of this indistinct ball so you okay. can see you can see the shape in front of you kind of oval shape shadowy but you can also see hair and well exactly yeah and uh it was changing and i could start to see a little bit of kind of a fuzzy spots floating around um yeah it was about five feet tall three feet wide but in the center i did see the hair so i i I thought is that a bear out there again i thought bear oh beautiful too when i really realized that it was hair and then i said that that's hair to myself i said Mm -hmm. that's hair and it it's beautiful hair because i mean it was just you know silky and wavy and that and then the word came back so hard, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bear, beautiful bear. And I thought, that's crazy. I mean, I'm not seeing a bear and I'm not seeing anything that's that beautiful. All I see is some hair, you know, but I was really squinting my eyes trying to see it. So when I did see it, I got a little bit excited, like, okay, that's what all that creaking is about. There's an animal big on my deck. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> once we got a little bit further along, the whole thing came into focus. And now I'm looking at um, the back side, which I know now is a Sasquatch. But at the time, it was just a big round ball of hair. She had her head down and her arms tucked in. And you did a great job on the drawing that I saw. And, and it uh, just a big, round, hairy stump is what i saw and um and i'm getting the 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 mind speak thing there the 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 words coming in bare and beautiful and you know and i'm thinking okay but i don't really see a bear you know yeah that that that, that's what that's what i heard anyway and so nothing happened for a while it just uh stood for a couple of minutes and um and then i remembered i had heard two voices very distinctly and i thought where's the other one of course i hear the boards creaking again Mm -hmm. and i didn't see them so i 
and I could actually feel the floor moving um, in the bed, you know, wow. it was at, the floorboards were moving a little bit, you know, and I, uh, I, I leaned over in the window and put my face right next to the glass and I looked down the side as much as I could and I could see his leg, great big black hairy leg and he had it uh, kind of tilted to the side a little bit so I, you know and uh, like protecting himself and I mm-hmm. can see this incredibly large muscular black leg covered in what looked like long black uh, like pubic hair curly wiry yeah. uh, hair and I thought holy shit that's and that kind that you know I think I pulled my head back I did this a few times there but yeah. I pulled back and I thought, no way. And I thought, yeah. So I looked back at the, the hairball, just stayed there, it didn't move. And I looked back at the leg again and <clears throat> I could see that it was moving. He, he started to move. And, uh, Gosh. <clears throat> so he stepped back away from the edge. So anyway, he, he stepped out and let me see him stood up tall and uh, I looked right at him. His, the, the size of him was impossible. <laughs> <laughs>